Would you trade your keyboard for a digital sketchpad? Lenovo thinks at least some of you will. It's replacing the traditional keypad with a touch deck that doubles as a digitizer so you can get a great note-taking experience. Lenovo is pushing boundaries with the Yoga Book by doing away with a physical keyboard altogether. In its place, you'll find a digital sketchpad that artists and note-taking fans will love. I adore how slick the Yoga Book looks. Its smooth, matte finish and clean straight lines give it an understated yet classy appearance. It's just 10.1 inches wide and 0.38 inches thick, making it super easy to tote around to meetings. It's also pretty light for a laptop at 1.5 pounds, but that's quite hefty for a tablet. Holding it up with one hand became quite strenuous over time. Because of its completely straight and smooth edges, opening the yoga book was sometimes difficult. I couldn't get a good grip to pry open the magnetic closure with. Thanks to the sturdy 360 degree hinge, you can set up the yoga book in four different modes. Create, browse, watch, and type. The Full HD IPS display on the Yoga Book got pretty bright and was easy to see even in direct sunlight. However, it gets pretty serious glare if you're watching a dark, gloomy show and you get quite a bit of reflection. But let's get to the feature that sets the Yoga Book apart. Lenovo calls this the Halo keyboard, presumably after the rings of light that surround each key. Instead of physical buttons, you get outlines of them on the completely smooth, flat, touch-sensitive surface. It's a lot to get used to, and Lenovo says it'll take about two hours to become familiar with the new method. While those who type with just two fingers will likely find this achievable, touch typists like myself will probably never get used to it. For us, resting our fingers on the F and J keys during a typing pause is second nature, but since you trigger those letters on the Halo deck, you can't do that on the Yoga Book. Still, with the generous spacing and size, as well as autocomplete suggestions and autocorrect, I eventually got pretty accurate on the Halo keyboard. It won't replace my laptop anytime soon though. Still, doing away with a real keyboard is sort of worth it because of the really cool sketchpad integration. First of all, you can use the included stylus that's the same size and thickness as a real pen to draw on the deck. That's like having a Wacom digitizer attached to its own screen. What's cooler is that you can write on the pad even when the tablet's asleep. Press and hold the pen button till it vibrates, and you can write on the plain black sketch pad. Your scribbles will be saved to the tablet. That's really interesting, but not all that useful since it doesn't help that you can't see what you're writing. But then there is the feature that lets you write with real pen and paper and have that all simultaneously show up on the yoga book. This is perhaps the most functional new feature that pen and paper fans will love. Using the cap of the included pen, you can swap out the stylus for an ink cartridge and use it as an actual pen. Place any notepad on the keyboard and start writing and it'll show up on the screen. This also works when the tablet's asleep. Now all of these features work as promised and work well. But as close as the last one gets to the real pen and paper experience, I was still limited by boundaries and some overlap issues. In a note-taking session where I needed to be fast, I found it easier to just write on paper, which never shifted, and on which I could write horizontally, vertically, and in corners. But on the yoga book, I had to pause and make sure that the pen was hovering at the right spot before I could continue scribbling. Most of the notes I took ended up not making much sense. Ultimately, the sketch pad is useful for drawing and writing short phrases, but not very helpful for lengthier note-taking sessions. Thanks to its quad-core Intel Atom processor, the Yoga Book was generally sippy and multitasked well. There was some lag in launching apps such as Camera and Amazon's Kindle, but the wait wasn't terribly long. The Yoga Book is available in Windows and Android versions, and the latter has been customized by Lenovo to offer better multitasking and productivity. You can run up to three apps side by side at the same time. And Lenovo promises an update to Android Nougat is coming. While we've yet to formally test the Yoga Book's battery life, it's been pretty impressive during my time with it. That's probably thanks to its large 8500 mAh battery. It took two days of light to average use for the Android version to drain from 100% to 10%. It doesn't recharge very fast though. 
The yoga book is the well-executed fruit of a creative idea and generally works as promised. But its biggest flaw is in its positioning. Lenovo calls this a tablet for ultimate productivity. But real productivity lies in being able to very specifically and quickly control what you're entering into the device. And you can't quite do that with a yoga book. Still, it's a great first step, and artists or doodlers are sure to love it. If you don't think of the yoga book as a work laptop or a real notepad, you'll enjoy what it has to offer.